Mark in chapter number four. And we are looking forward to seeing what God does uh, tonight. So let's pray. And then, uh, and then we'll read. If you're our folks, most of our folks are tuning in. They're probably standing. So we'll read first standing, and then we'll uh, pray after that. It's a simple way, even at home, uh, as we're collectively and corporately uh, reading God's Word, we stand together. Simple way to honor God's Word, and His Word is because He is very worthy. I want to look at the end of the chapter Beginning in chapter, uh, verse number 35, we're in Mark chapter number 4. Beginning in verse number 35, the Bible says, And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? A very simple outline, if you like outlines, is that Jesus rebuked the winds, the waves, and the weak. The disciples were weak there. And I want to talk about that tonight and try to help us perhaps not be weak in that way. Father in heaven, we love you, and Lord, we trust you. We, we are bought by you, we live for you, we're protected by you, and one day you will call us home, and we will be home with you. But until then, Father, help us to be men and women of strong faith. We need it. You deserve it. Our community needs it. Our missionaries need it. The folks that our missionaries are trying to reach. They need us to be people of strong faith. The lost world around us needs some strong, faithful people to punch some holes in the dark and let the light of Jesus Christ shine. Lord, would you speak to our hearts tonight through these verses and others that we'll look at. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And you can be seated. And again, we are so thankful that you're, you're with us. And uh, I want you to notice the words, the words. Words matter in the Bible. If you look there in verse number 37, it tells us what arose. So it, in other words, it arose. It wasn't there. They weren't out on a stormy day. They didn't see lightning off in the distance. They were out going across, and it arose. Okay? But what arose? A great storm of wind. Not just wind, but a storm of wind. Not just any storm, but a great storm of wind. If you've ever been out on the ocean... Or even on a lake. I remember uh, years ago, I was with my Aunt Mary and Uncle Harlan. Uncle Harlan's in heaven now. And, uh, but we were across the lake in, in, in a little John boat, and we were uh, fishing. Man, we were killing the perch. We were just bringing them in, bringing them in. Mostly Uncle Harlan was bringing them in, but we were trying, and we were helping. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a black cloud came across, and here come the wind. And so, man, he... he said, get the fish up. We were throwing them in the bucket. And, and uh, man, he fired up that little boat. And we were humming across the lake. And we ended up just almost being capsized. Uh, it rained on us. It held on us a little bit. But the winds were so terrible. We were face in trying to get off that little boat to the houseboat across the lake. And we ended up going directly into the wind and just kind of skipping across the lake. And when we finally got there, he gave the motor everything that it had, and it was a pretty frightening moment, just trying to get to some safety, and uh, we, we've been on a, on a big ship at, on, during a storm, and it is, it'll get your attention, when the water that's outside the ship gets up and onto the ship, uh, it'll get your attention very quickly, I, I'll never remember, I'll never forget, usually I don't remember most things, but I'll never forget being up in an area we were not supposed to be with, Brother Paul, our music leader, when he's not uh, here, uh, he's with us on a cruise, and we were in this storm, 
And we went to the very front area where nobody was. They said, gentlemen, it's dangerous here. We said, well, you be careful. We'll keep tying down stuff. And this big storm was blowing. We go to the very front of the ship and, and um, the, as close as we could without being crew members. And there was a guardrail to hang on to. And there was a big glass windbreak. And so we were able to stand there. But we could see the waves. And that ship would go up. And we'd be looking at the sky. And then all of a sudden, that ship would come down, and, and the next wave would be coming over, and it would hit it. And you could see and feel and hear the waves hitting the ship. And it was like boom, 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 and you'd hear it going all the way down throughout the ship. And I, I remember, like it was yesterday, how that when the one big wave came over the front of the ship, many decks below where we were, we were up very high on an observation deck, I just remember, like, that is so much water that you could see the blue. Now, you know, I expected white foam. I expected clear water. It was enough water that you could see the blue in the wave as it crashed in. It was frightening. And we were on a ship that was like 15 decks high and three football fields long. Can I tell you that Jesus and the disciples were not in a ship that was that big? They were in a, a smaller ship, much smaller. It wouldn't have been as wide. It wouldn't have been as stable. They would have been in a fishing boat, in a fishing ship. And it says that the waves beat into the ship. The, the Bible gives us this wording so that we can see the drama. It beat against the ship and into the ship. And we get further clarification that says, so that it was now full. Now, friend, nobody wants to be on a sinking ship. Nobody wants to be on a sinking ship. The disciples were in a panic. This is not sailing weather. This is not safe. They're in a dangerous place. Let me get you to think about also the context, okay? Because we always want to think about it. We don't want to just pull a couple of verses out of context. In the context, beginning even in the first nine verses of this chapter, is the parable of the sower. And as Jesus tells them, the parable of the sower, he talks about all the things. If you look uh, there, it, it talks about, you know, the sower goes, and it tells you different things that happen. And then Jesus comes back and clarifies. In verse number 14, he tells us that the sower, from verses 1 through 9, is the word. The, the, the sower is sowing the word. The, the, the word is the seed that's being sown, okay? And so the sower sows the word and then in verse number 15, when it talks about the people where it just kind of didn't last, it said that Satan snatched it away. Robbed, it was robbed by Satan right away in verse number 15. In verse number 17, you see that because of affliction and persecution, that some people got offended and they didn't last very long. And then in the other odd verse there, verse number 19, you see that some people got caught up by the cares of this world, whether it was riches or things. And man, we see that in our day today. People are all caught up in riches and in things. You and I both know that God is not pleased. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We cannot make treasures of things. Things get old, things break, things can be stolen, things fall apart. And then we move on to other things. What we want to do is keep our eye on heavenly things. But in the context, we understand why the different things that happen to the seed. Some of it, Satan robs it away very quickly. Some people get caught up, uh, get disappointed, they get bitter, they, they get offended because of affliction or persecution. Some people are caught up in the, in the cares of this world and, and stuff, money, riches. And then you get to verse number 20. And he talks about some people get it, and they stay in the boat, and they're very fruitful in the proverbial boat. And, and they're fruitful. Some are more fruitful than others. Uh, our, Jesus says, wherein is my Father glorified? 
that you bear much fruit. So the goal is certainly to, to, you know, what we're looking for when we go out and about and we're trying to preach the Word of God, the goal is to see people that are going to get it, get rooted in, rooted and built it up in Christ, and that they will bear much fruit. And how do we bear fruit? Well, we bear fruit by winning people to the Lord and, and discipling people. Those are good fruits. And so our goal is to try to bear much fruit. The sower is not responsible for the results. Now that's very important because sometimes people will do some things that are wrong so they can try to have numbers. And numbers are good. Numbers represent souls. We're not against numbers. But we have to remember our motivation. It really would be good if some of the people that we won to the Lord would actually show up in heaven. And uh, so we, we want to keep going. And is everybody, even in the example that Jesus Christ gives here in Mark chapter number 4, of, in, the, in the parable of the sower, it was kind of no, not good, not good, not good, finally some good. So most of the people in this world are not going to go to heaven. Most of the people in this world are not going to receive the word of God and grow in Christ. But for those that do, it's great. Continuing in the context, you get down to verses 21 through 32, and again, it's talking about letting our light shine by spreading the word of God, and it's just important to witness to people as best we can all the time. And then there's um, a quick lesson about how it can lead to something really great. He talks about the mustard seed. He, he talks about the kingdom as like a little mustard seed. But you know what? If that mustard seed gets planted in the right place and the and it's tended to properly, it can grow up into something magnificent. And, and mustard is one of the most powerful of, of all the spices. It's, it's very powerful. Um, so, again, the little mustard seed. So, then it brings us to our context. Again, to the, to the verses, they go straight from telling these parables to hop it in the boat. He's like, we're going to go out and tell people about, you know, the Lord. We're going to tell people, spread the word, spread the word, spread the word. Hey, guys, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. And then as they go, they're following Jesus' command. Looking at verse 35, he says, In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, so this is Jesus telling them what to do, let us pass over unto the other side. So they're doing exactly what Jesus wants them to do. They're obedient. They are with Jesus in the boat. And yet something bad happens. Sometimes we think when bad things happen, it's because somebody did something bad. Sometimes it's just a test. Sometimes it's to strengthen us. The Bible says that whom, whom God loveth, he chasteneth. So sometimes we are being chastened. But sometimes it's a test of our faith to see how strong we are and to make ourselves even stronger. When you go to the gym and work out real hard and you're sore that day or the next day or the next three days, um, is that normal? Because that's not that I go to the gym very often, obviously, but when I do, it hurts. That's not your body saying quit. That's your body getting stronger. I, we tell people pain is God's way of removing weakness from our bodies, you know. And, uh, but you'll be stronger next time and stronger next time and stronger next time. Friend, can I tell you tonight, going through bad things hurts. But the more we're able to go through the bad things without giving up, without giving out, without giving in, we'll be stronger for the next challenge ahead. Our nation, dare say out of the world, is going through a bad time right now. You would be blind have your head in a hole somewhere if you didn't think these were strange times. But let me encourage you in this. We've been doing the right thing. We've been obedient to Jesus. I know our church, we, we, we haven't changed one iota. Listen, we are still the same doctrinal church that we were on the day we started on the first part of June, first Sunday in June, Back in 2003, nearly 17 years ago, I could preach any message I preach now. I could have preached then. Any message I preach then, I could preach now. We've been doing the right things. We've been in the boat with Jesus. Just like many other churches have. 
And yet we find ourselves in a storm. Kind of came up pretty quick. A storm arose. And listen, the winds are blowing right now. And a lot of people feel beat up. And they feel like they're about to sink. Can I tell you, the good news is tonight, God's still on the throne. And what I don't want you to do, and what I can't do, is act like the disciples did in verse number 38. Look at it. It says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Can you imagine? Listen, you know Jesus is doing this on purpose. He knows there's a storm. Uh, obviously, he's wet if, the, if he's laying on a pillow and the ship is about to sink. But the disciples woke him up, and they said, say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus, do you even care? Friend, he had just taught them and explained to them how important it was to spread the word of God everywhere, to everyone, not knowing Who's going to receive it and bear fruit? Hey, Satan's going to rob some folks. Some people are going to get discouraged. Some people are not going to be around. Some people are going to get caught up in worldly stuff. But some are going to bear fruit. Jesus wasn't wasting that lesson on, somebody, on a group of men that were about to die in the, middle of the, in the middle of the sea. It's not what he was doing at all. This is a test. And unfortunately... They failed the test. Jesus, do you even care? Look at it. I mean, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now, they're making some wild assumptions. Number one, they're assuming Jesus doesn't know what's going on. And they're assuming or questioning the fact that he even cares. And they're assuming the fact that they're about to perish. Can I tell you, we don't know everything that's going on. And certainly we know that Jesus cares. But friend, some people are so gloom and doom. Some people, I mean, they're, they're saying for the health of, of humanity, don't watch the news more than once or twice a day. Just check in and check back out. Don't watch it. Child abuse is up. Uh, uh, um, divorces will be up soon, I'm sure. That takes a while. Suicides are up. I mean, it's really weird out there. People are so, so depressed. We don't know what's going to happen next. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. We believe that we have a government that was founded by, by some Christian people, by believers, and that hopefully we've got some enough believers in place in leadership positions that they're going to bail our nation out. And listen, that's their business. I can't control what they do. Now, what I have to do is accept where I am today. And try to do the best I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't do that if I'm hiding in a hole. I can't do that if we're doing... I mean, there's some churches that are just closed down, just closed down. But we've chosen to go online. And we can reach more people than we could just... That come in from our community. I say our community. We have people that drive over 50 miles to come to our church. But what I'm saying is this. Don't make assumptions. And don't question God in a negative way. We say, well, what about this or what about that? You know, why us? Well, why not us? How are we ever going to show ourselves strong? How are we ever going to show our faith, trials of our faith? The Bible says that through those trials, God's trying to settle us, strengthen us, establish us, and settle us, you know? And so how can we do it? Don't fail the test. Keep a good attitude. Listen, God is still on the throne. He knows exactly what's going on. And can I tell you this? He knows the end. God knew the end of this pandemic before patient number one ever got sick. Jesus answers them back. And it's not nice. Listen, don't, don't buy into the little sissy hippie Jesus. Jesus comes back at them. And, uh, you know, when they're asking, Master, carest thou not? He comes back in verse number 40, look at it. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? Friend, if we're in a place tonight where we're asking, God, do you even care? Lord, do you care? 
There's your answer. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He said they have no faith. And think about who he's speaking to. He's speaking to his disciples. These guys have seen the thousands fed. They have seen things. They've, they've, they've seen people raised from the dead. They've seen him heal the sick. And they have no faith. So listen, if your faith has been a little shaken, don't beat yourself up, but come to yourself and come to the Lord and realize that Jesus Christ is very much on the throne and everything's going to be okay. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Listen, storms come. We've had other storms. Some storms are bigger than others. We've had H1N1, bird flu, swine flu, acid rain, global warming, global cooling back in the 70s. We ride this wave. This happens to be a storm that the world has reacted to in a much bigger way. In some ways, they're being very responsible. In some ways, they're just freaking out. As Christians, we don't have time to freak out. What we need to do is draw an eye to the Lord, get close to Him, and allow Him to use this time for us to reach out to other people, to, to be a calm head in a weird world, and to just try to be Jesus Christ to others. Jesus wasn't nervous at all. He laid down his head and was taking a nap. Does he care? Sure he cares. Storms come and storms go, but he's still on the throne. And again, Jesus Christ sees the end that we can't see. The Jewish people were never expecting Jesus Christ to come when he did, to do what he did, to die like he did, to be buried for three days and to... Raised from the dead like he did. Listen, friend. They didn't know what was next. And yet the Bible tells us that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we know God knows the end from the beginning. Let me encourage you. Even in this situation, very much like God knows the end from the beginning. Use this time to pray. Read your Bible. Use this time to Love on somebody and encourage somebody. Maybe check on an elderly neighbor or a sick person. And be the Jesus Christ. Be the hands and feet and maybe the wallet of Jesus. Be the food delivery. Be the Uber service for Jesus. Do what you can to try to reach the Lord. Uh, not to, to reach people for the Lord and on behalf of the Lord. We're going to close in prayer, but I want to encourage you. Listen, tonight we have... Folks in the hospital alone because their family members can't even get in. We have people that are homesick tonight and haven't been able to get out at all. We have people that are out of work. We have people that are, may run out of food. But if you'll call on us, and if you'll allow somebody to call on you, together we could be the light of Jesus Christ, even during a dark time. This is our responsibility. But listen... There have been believers throughout different periods of time that have had to do different things. Let me assure you, this is our time. This is our place. And this is our opportunity to do something big on behalf of God. So don't lose your head. Let's lose our pride. Let's lose our lack of faith. And let's focus in on the Lord Jesus Christ and try to reach some other people. Friend, if you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven, we would love to talk to you. Please contact the church, and we'll be glad to show you in the Bible exactly what God says on how to be saved. But friend, if you are saved, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? In verse 39, Jesus simply got up and calmed the winds and the waves. And then he rebuked those who had no faith. Let's let God worry about the winds and the waves in this big storm. And let us focus on doing the work of Jesus Christ. We love you. We hope to see you soon. I hope it will be in person. But we'll just do the best we can. Until then. And this works. If you need somebody to talk to, you need somebody to pray with, certainly 
contact us. We love you very much, and we miss you more than you will ever know. But God's still on the throne. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. And Lord, we know that you care what's going on. We are not perishing. We're just not. But Lord, there are some people who have some concerns. So I pray if there's a stimulus package coming, that that'll come and relieve some financial fears. Uh, we're praying for some good news medically. And from those people that are involved in that, that's their business. The government has their part to do. The medical field has their part to do. But Lord, we as believers, we have our part to do. We pray that you would strengthen us, that you would show us uh, where and how you want us to be and do. And Lord, I pray that you'd comfort the hearts of those that might be just a little upset, those that might be a little timid or afraid, those that might be a little concerned. Certainly, causing people to be concerned improves ratings on television and on the news. Lord, I pray instead that what we might do is just improve ratings of people getting into their Bible and reading about how good you are, how powerful you are, how all-knowing you are, and how loving you are. Father, we love you, and I pray that you'd bless in Jesus' name with thanksgiving.